Hey, welcome everybody. Welcome to Anthem Church. My name is Paul. I'm the vision and teaching pastor at Anthem. Thank you so much for gathering with us today. Anthem is a word that means a song of praise and devotion, and we want our lives to be a song of praise and devotion. So we gather together uh, virtually now across cities and counties and states uh, in order that we can uh, be empowered by Jesus so that we can live as Jesus lives and love as Jesus loves. So thank you so much for gathering with us today, whenever and wherever you are. We'd love to know that you're here. Uh, so text us, whether you're a guest here, uh, just hanging out, or whether you call Anthem home, uh, text us at our church phone number. Just let us know that you're here. We'd pray for everybody who's here. Uh, so if you text us and let us know that, we will be praying for you. And if there's a specific prayer request that you'd like our uh, prayer team or our pastors uh, to be able to pray with you about, you can let us know uh, there on our phone number. Uh, Anthem Kids, thank you so much for being here, kids. Uh, we have our uh, Anthem Kids classroom is open and available. So if you are a parent, a uh, grandparent, an uncle, an aunt, uh, someone with, uh, with a little kid that you would love to do Sunday school with, uh, text us and let us know. We have a code for you we'd love to give to you. Uh, and each week it's updated with uh, some prayer, a lesson, uh, a video sometimes, and uh, some craft ideas as well to help uh, disciple uh, and care for your little one. Uh, we have a podcast here at Anthem called At the Speed of Life, and it's on our uh, regular uh, Anthem feed. We'd love for you to sign up and uh, encourage you to, to uh, subscribe to the feed. This week, uh, we have a, a, a great podcast with our friend Cole. He's an American pastor uh, who uh, moved down to Mexico to plant churches, and uh, he shares a lot about what it looks like to be a foreigner in another country, having to learn a language for the second time, uh, and all that, that, that it looks like to be a foreigner in another, in another space. Uh, it's a fascinating conversation. Uh, I'd love for you to uh, encourage you to, uh, uh, to listen to it. Plus, we draft our favorite uh, Mexican food, and that was really fun, too. Uh, and if you are hanging out with us today on September 13th, uh, then I encourage you tonight at 6 o'clock to come and hang with us at our community dinner. Yes, it's another Zoom call, but we haven't gotten, be we haven't gotten been able to, we haven't gotten been able to, we haven't gotten been able to is what I went with there. Hold on. Okay. We haven't been able to gather together physically in like six months for dinner. And that's something we used to do regularly. But now, um, even though we haven't been able to gather physically together, even if we wanted to, we couldn't because people call Anthem home uh, in different cities and counties and states now. Uh, so we want to gather together with the new peeps uh, <laughs> at Anthem uh, with us tonight here at 6. So just put your webcam on have dinner with us, uh, and I'm going to uh, be able to share a little bit about some signposts uh, of where God is leading us as a tribe and a community, uh, and some exciting things that he's doing uh, in and within us. So we'd love for you to be a part of that tonight, uh, six o'clock. If you uh, need uh, the Zoom link, actually, you can text us, and we'll text you the, the, the direct Zoom link uh, for tonight. Huh, all right, we are ready. Nia, are you ready? Nia is giving me a thumbs up. We're ready. All right, let us... Uh, Ah, let's take a deep breath. Let's get ready to uh, enter into a time of worship together. This is a time of, of training where we are shaped and changed by Jesus. So we come into this space with humility and vulnerability uh, to worship God uh, and to ask him to, to shape our hearts uh, so that we can live as he lives and love as he loves. So I'm going to take a moment here. Uh, we're going to uh, read some scripture to, to guide us for today. Uh, we're going to do a blessing video to thank God for what he's done. We're going to sing some music. Uh, we're going to pray together, so get your phones ready. Uh, if you call Anthem home, we'll receive our giving, and then we're going to uh, do some, uh, receive communion, uh, and then we're going to sing a little bit more together. Our verse, our guiding verse uh, for, uh, for today is found in Acts chapter 11, and uh, we see this in verse 25. Then Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul, and when he found him, he brought him to Antioch. They were there a whole year and received hospitality in the church and taught a substantial crowd. And it is in Antioch that the disciples were first called Christians.
so wonderful is your unfailing love. The cross has spoken mercy over me. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no heart could truly know how glorious, how beautiful you Take a moment to lift our voices toward uh, uh, our, uh, our God, our beautiful God uh, in prayer. So grab your phones if you've got them. We'd love for you to text uh, any prayer requests or blessings that you have right now for uh, our beautiful God. So would you pray with us?
And if you call Anthem home, uh, this is where we worship through our giving and through our finances. And so you can uh, gather with us in worship uh, through giving uh, through our, our, your phone uh, or through our website at anthemtribe.org. Uh, would you uh, gather with me in prayer for our finances? Holy Jesus, thank you so much that uh, you uh, receive our worship through provisions. Thank you for providing our finances and thank you that we may worship you through them. So God, we ask that you would receive uh, our offering as worship and that you would use it to expand your kingdom here and now. Amen. Amen. And uh, as Jesus followers, uh, we do something when we gather together. Jesus says, when you gather, do this in remembrance of me. And what he means is for us to take uh, some bread. Uh, and he says, this is my body. And he says, uh, Take my blood. This is shed as a ransom for many. This is what we call communion, and we don't understand how it works, but Jesus is physically present in this. In this moment, we get to taste and see and be reminded how he's come to make all things new. So would you pray with me? Holy Jesus, we thank you so much that you have come to make all things new and that we can taste and see how you make all things new. So would we... Uh, ask for forgiveness as children of God for those things we have done and those that we have left undone. And as children of Jesus, we receive that forgiveness today. Amen. Brothers and sisters, please take and eat. Love's like a hurricane, I am a tree. Bending beneath the weight of his wind and mercy. When all of a sudden I am unaware of these afflictions eclipsed by glory, and I realize just how beautiful you are and how great your affections are for me. And oh,
thank you for this day. Thank you that you love us unconditionally uh, and uh, wholeheartedly. Jesus, that you pursue us day after day and hour after hour. God, we pray that um, the things that we have sung from our hearts this morning uh, would be a pleasing sound to your ear. We love you uh, in all that we do. Amen. All right. Thank you, everybody. Go ahead and uh, grab a seat, if you would. You guys are already all sitting down. <laughs> it's been six months. Y'all are sitting down. All right. Everybody even here is sitting down. Nobody is standing up. All right. Let's go. We're going to transition to some teaching time right now, everybody. But before we do, uh, I want to uh, uh, invite you to tonight. If you're listening to this uh, tonight on September 13th, we'd love for you to come and have dinner with us. Uh, we uh, cannot all gather together because of the pandemic. Uh, and we can't all gather together because uh, Anthem, uh, peeps call Anthem home in different cities and counties and states. And so we want to get together um, tonight for dinner. It's going to be at six o'clock if you'd like uh, that, uh, uh, that uh, Zoom link itself to gather with us. We'll text it to you. Just text us on our church phone number and let us know. But we're going to have dinner together, and I'm going to get to share uh, some wonderful, amazing signposts that God has been leading us down and uh, the vision that we see God uh, marching us towards. So we'd love for you to join us uh, tonight uh, at 6 o'clock there. And with that in mind, let's uh, transition to some teaching time. We're starting a new series today. So if you got your Bibles uh, or your Bible apps, go ahead and open them up. Uh, we uh, read out of a, in the New Testament, or the Christian scriptures, uh, we read out of the Kingdom New Testament. It's my favorite version of it, and it's on BibleGateway.com under New Testament for everyone, if you're looking for a Bible app with that. Huh, all right. Will that stop your Alexa Luke? Okay, let's pray. Holy Jesus, thank you so much that you walk in life, or walk through life with us. Thank you so much that uh, your scripture says that uh, though we may walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we fear no evil, not because there's not danger around, not because this world is right side up or the way it should be, but because you are with us. Jesus, may we feel your presence in the middle of this, and may we rest in that presence. Amen. Amen. Uh, we're starting a new series today called Into the Unknown, uh, and I thought it was a, a, a good series to, or a good series title uh, to go with, because starting now in September, uh, you have lots of families that are sending their kids to uh, a more rigorous online school than they ever did uh, in the spring, maybe for the first time. Uh, both parents uh, maybe working, or one parent working, maybe both from home, trying to figure out what all that is going to look like. Uh, we have adults uh, who are going back to school for the first time. Either going back to school, it's been a couple years out of high school, or it's been a number of years out of high school, and they weren't planning on uh, having it done through online school or having it done this way. Um, we have kids who are uh, adults who are finishing their college years and didn't expect it to be this way. Uh, we we are, are walking into this uh, time in September, almost into this new era of, of the unknown. And so I was talking with somebody a little bit about it and being in the unknown, and they, they said, Paul, I, I really, uh, you know, I, I don't know if that's the best title, because I feel like we've been in, in the middle of the unknown, like, since March, like, the, like, in March is when the unknown started, and now we're just in the middle of it, and I thought about that, and I, I like that idea that, you know, in March, like, prior to March 13th, like, what were, you know, our plans, right? It certainly wasn't this, and, and you could definitely say that in March, like, that was the beginning of the unknown, but as I was thinking about that, I was thinking about like that interview question. It's this terrible interview question. Uh, raise your hand in this room if you've been asked this question about what's your five-year plan. Anybody been asked what your five-year plan is? Yeah, 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 great. Um, yeah, you're like 18. There's, there's, you, like, I don't even know what five, you haven't even had five years to have a five-year plan. So uh, everyone has been asked that question before. I was thinking about it. Um, because in my last job, uh, like five years ago, my last job in January, I was asked, that was the last time I was asked what my five-year plan was. And I was the, an assistant pastor at this, at this other church. And they were like, well, our five-year, our plan for you is to take over and, and be like the pastor at, at this church when the time comes. So my five-year plan at that point was like, sweet, it's, it won't be five years, it'll be longer, but, but this is the, the plan we have. 
And like three months later, I was resoundingly fired. I was just moved out, like just boom, gone. Once you were here, now you were gone. What was my five-year plan like at that point? And then like two months later, uh, we planted Anthem Church in our backyard with 12 people. Like six months earlier, my five-year plan was something drastically different. And when we, planted that, uh, when we planted Anthem five years ago in our backyard with 12 people, my five-year plan was like, this won't work, uh, and this will go away, which is fine, because all I need to do is just follow God, and God's telling me to do this, so once I do this and it doesn't work, then we can go on with our lives and do something else. And yet, here we are, five years later, right? What's our five-year plan? Like, we've been in the unknown. Like, whatever, anybody asked you today, what's your five-year plan? What's my five-day plan? My kids start school on Monday morning. I don't have a five-day plan yet. We've been in the middle of the unknown. Because five years ago, I didn't know that I was going to get fired. I didn't know that Anthem Church was going to start. I didn't know Anthem Church was going to be here five years later. Certainly not in the way that God is doing it now. So uh, being in the middle of the unknown or into the unknown is something we've constantly been in. And luckily for us, there have been followers of Jesus that have also been in the unknown, and, and we, can, we can listen to their stories, and we can glean from them. So we're going to do that in our fall series this year. Um, we're going to be looking at some of these followers of Jesus as they uh, embark on the unknown. So if you've got your Bibles, come with me to Acts chapter 11. That is John 11. Man, I thought I flipped it to the right one, like, immediately. I was so stoked. I didn't. Acts chapter 11. I didn't mark it, so we have to wait till I find it. Verse 20, where are we at? Verse 19? Acts chapter 11, verse 19. The people have been scattered because of the persecution that came about over Stephen, went as far afield as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, speaking the word only to Jewish people. But some from among them, who were from Cyprus and Cyrene in the first place, arrived in Antioch and spoke to the Hellenists as well, announcing the good news of the Lord Jesus. The Lord's hand was with them, and a large number of people believed and turned to the Lord. I want to stop there for a second, because uh, if it seems like we just jumped right in the middle of a story, it's because we did. We just jumped right in the middle of the story, and there's so much detail and stuff, and we'll get to, to some of that. N not today. We're just going to do some, some cliff notes today. We'll get to some of that later on. But we did just jump right into this story. And what we see here is that uh, there was this persecution. So just a couple of cliff notes to get us going. One, uh, the book of Acts is written by a Jesus follower named Luke. Uh, and Luke writes this story, or, or writes this book as a research paper for a wealthy Christian named Theophilus. And Theophilus wants to know if what he believes is actually true and historically happened. And so Luke goes, let me go interview those people who were actually a part of it. And then uh, Luke uh, writes about the, the church planting stories of the early church uh, in the book of Acts. Uh, what's happened so far in the book of Acts is that Jesus has died. He's been resurrected. He's ascended into heaven. And then God came down. The Holy Spirit comes down on Jesus' followers. And they begin to do this thing. The same thing that we shoot to do today. Live as Jesus lives and love as Jesus loves. And so they saw themselves as a fulfillment of Jewish theology. They saw Christianity not as a new religion, but as a fulfillment, a continuation of Jewish theology. In much of the same way that Mormon theology sees itself as a continuation or a fulfillment of Christian theology. That's how the Jewish Christians in the day saw themselves to Judaism. Now, from a Christian standpoint, Mormonism, uh, I would go, ah, it's not a continuation. It, it's its own thing, and that's fine, but it's not a fulfillment of Christianity. We would disagree with that theology. And the same thing happened with the Jewish Christians back in the first century. They saw themselves as just a, as another Jewish denomination, but the Jewish theologians said, it is, we are not the same. We are, are different. And what takes place is there's some state-sanctioned religious violence that takes place against the, the Jewish Christians in Jerusalem, which is so awful in so many ways. And one of the ways that's so bad is that the Jewish leaders who were doing the state-sanctioned religious violence were people who suffered from state-sanctioned religion violence by the Roman Empire. And so we just see how redemptive violence never brings peace. It never brings healing. Evil always consumes evil. And so, <coughs> and so what we have is these Jewish Christians who are here in Jerusalem, and then they have to flee. They have to make the, this choice to leave. And where they go, go ahead and throw the map up there, Ray. 
where they go is we've got a couple different places that, that they head to. One of the places I want us to see there is uh, from Jerusalem. And they go up to Antioch. Oh, I meant to make an arrow. They were going to be green and gold arrows, but because God's favorite baseball team, but I didn't make those. Okay, well, pretend there's a gold arrow where Antioch is, because that's where it was going to be. And the Christians le- some of the Christians left from Jerusalem to Antioch. Now, that is 300 miles on foot. Uh, Antioch takes about 15 days to go, if you're huffing it, in the first century. So just imagine, because sometimes when we think about these Christians that kind of uh, uh, um, spread out, I think sometimes we think of these people as like trained, uh, perhaps Christian pastors who were who were trained in seminary or theological training and were trained to go out and plant churches. And none of that is true. And it was, the, the first Christians were uneducated. Uh, they, they, they were uh, impoverished, right? They were not people uh, that, uh, of means. And when they have to leave, they have to make a choice to leave Jerusalem or, uh, and keep their faith. When they leave, they, 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 they are leaving. I mean, it's move, move 300 miles from where you are today, right? Like you have to go find a job. You have to move your kids. You have to move your, your wife. You leave all your friends. You leave your family. 300 miles away from Jerusalem to Antioch. To put that in our perspective, from Portland, Boise, Idaho is about 300 miles away from Portland, Oregon. How much different is the culture 300 miles away from Portland and Idaho than it is in Portland? If you live in, Oregon, if you live in uh, Southern California, um, from Disneyland, 300 miles is about San Jose. So you're walking from Disneyland to San Jose. Or if you were to live in Arizona, 300 miles from like Phoenix is like, um, uh, like Albuquerque, New Mexico. You, you are huffing it. You are walking. Not because you want to. Not because there's a, a wonderful new job. But because if you don't, you either have to change your faith or you're going to suffer violence. And so they, they leave. They flee. They're refugees. And they end up in this place called Antioch. Now, this place called Antioch was uh, full of non-Jewish people and Jewish people. Antioch has this incredible history there. Uh, the, the, the celebration of, of, Han- of Hanukkah comes from some of the oppression that came out of, of the, the region of Antioch, and Antioch is the fourth. Uh, so there, there were a number of Jewish people that were in Antioch and lived in Antioch, and they would travel to Jerusalem for festivals and such. So when the Jewish Christians go there to Antioch, the first thing they do is, well, they, they go where the other Jewish people are, and they begin to teach, uh, or begin to share, try to live as Jesus lives, and love as he loves. And there's also some uh, Jewish followers of Jesus that know uh, Greek, right? They've been raised outside of the Jewish culture and the Gentile culture, the Roman culture. And so they begin to, to live as Jesus lives and love as Jesus loves. And what, and what happens? What do we see? Well, the Jewish Christians uh, begin, to, we begin to see that, that there are non-Jewish people that become a part of Jesus. Though they flee from Jerusalem and 300 miles away, they don't know anything that's going on, right? They don't have a job there. There's no family there. They're, they're new to the culture. What do they do? They begin to practice what they learn in Jerusalem. In Acts chapter 2, we see the beginnings of the church, and we see how they are to be, what happens when Jesus' followers come together. In Acts chapter 2, 42, we see this. They all gave full attention to the teaching of the apostles and to the common life, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Down to verse 44. All those who believed came together and held everything in common. They sold their possessions and their belongings, and they divided it up to everyone in proportion to their various needs. So that's where these people came from. In verse 46, we see this. Day by day, they were all together attending the temple. They broke bread in their various houses and ate their food with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and standing in favor with all the people. And every day, the Lord added to their number those who were being rescued. Uh, we see that the, the Jewish followers of Jesus, when they leave Jerusalem and they go into Antioch, the first thing they do, how are they going to, to act in the unknown? What do followers of Jesus do when they go into the unknown? Well, the first thing that we see is that they gather together. See, we, they gather together in church, not because they're trying to earn points with God, not because they're trying to earn points with one another, not, not because it, it feels good, but because it is a part of who we are as Jesus followers. We gather together because there's stuff that we can do uh, together that we can't do apart. There are certain things that happen when Jesus followers are in one another's lives, whether it is through church gathered on Sunday, whether it is through eating meals together or DNA communities or serving together in larger communities. 
there's something that happens when we gather together and we see these Jew- Jewish followers. When, what do we do in the unknown? Well, the first thing they do is they make sure they, they, they gather together with, their G- with other Jesus followers. It's incredibly important. And they continue on in verse 22. We see this. News of all this reached the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to Antioch. When he arrived and saw the grace of God, he was glad and he urged all of them to stay firmly loyal to the Lord from the bottom of their hearts. He was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and faith, and a substantial crowd was added to the Lord. Then Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for, Paul, to, for Saul, and when he found him, he brought him to Antioch, and they were there a whole year and were received hospitality in the church and taught a substantial crowd. And it was in Antioch that these disciples were first called Christians. So these uh, Jewish followers of Jesus, they begin to gather in a church, and they begin to uh, uh, not only reach out to the Jewish people that they knew, but also across cultural and racial and economic biases, because the, 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 non, the, the Gentile followers of Jesus, they reached out to them too. And so this church begins to become, come together. It's a church that, 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 uh, that, that goes past racial lines, ethnic lines, economic class lines, political lines. It goes past all of that, and it comes together. And so the church in Jerusalem hears about it, and they send a guy named Barnabas, who's an incredible pastor. And Barnabas comes out, and I love this. Barnabas sees how this church is being together. All right, Bar- Barnabas sees how they act. He sees how they love one another. He sees how they serve one another. And the first thing Barnabas does is go, oh my gosh, I got to get my friend Saul here. Just hold on. You guys stay where you are. Don't stop doing what you're doing. I'm going to be right back. And he takes off. He takes off to Tarsus uh, for his friend Saul. Now Saul, his Jewish name is Saul. His uh, Gentile name, his Greek name is Paul. Same person. Saul was a um, terrorist. He was a religious extremist terrorist. And the event that sent the Jewish Christians from Jerusalem to Antioch was this uh, a Christian pastor named Stephen. And Saul had overseen the execution of Stephen because of his faith. That is what sent the Christians to Antioch. But in that time, Saul came to Jesus. And Saul turns away from his terrorist ways. And he comes, he's trying to learn what it looks like to be a follower of Jesus. And Barnabas sees this community, and what does he do? He jets off, and it says that he looks for his friend Saul, and he brings him here. Why? Because he knows this is a place of healing. When they gather together, they're also an outpost of healing. He gathers, uh, uh, Saul comes in. Barnabas brings Saul in, knowing that he's not going to be rejected. He's not going to say that, well, you need to believe before you belong here. He's not going to say you need to behave before you belong. It's you belong. Barnabas saw that this was a place where people who were hurt, people who, who, um, who were new, people who were different, people who had done really bad things and needed to be cleaned up, that this was a place for them at Antioch. I can't think of, of a of a more pure picture of the church than an outpost of healing. It is such an outpost of healing that this in Antioch is the first place where people are called Christians, or a better name for it is Little Christ. Little Christ. Which is really hard because, um, you know, I like to uh, use the term Jesus follower instead of Christian because Christian so often has this, uh, at least in our context, I think like an intellectual understanding rather than a, uh, an orthopraxy rather than a lived out understanding. And so I always say Jesus follower because following, we follow Jesus, right, in action and in word. But the people around these people at Antioch started calling them little Christ. I feel comfortable like saying, oh, I'm a Jesus follower. I don't know how comfortable I feel being called a little Jesus. But that's where Jesus is shaping us towards. Like, that's the goal. And this church here in Antioch had that. It's beautiful. Let's continue on. Where are we at? Verse 27. Uh, Around that time, prophets came from Jerusalem to Antioch. One of them, Agabus by name, stood up and gave an indication through the Spirit that there would be a great famine over the whole world. This took place during the reign of Claudius. So Luke likes to put little historical notes to give us timelines as to when things happen. Not for us, it's for Theophilus, the guy he's writing to, but 2,000 years later, we get to uh, use that, these historical things and pinpoint where Luke is talking and what, when these things take place. 
uh, each of, verse 29, each of the disciples determined according to their ability to send what they could to help the brothers and sisters living in Judea. They carried out this plan, sending their gifts to the elders by the hand of Barnabas and Saul. So th- this group of little Christs come together and, and they, they, they are in a, the un, an unknown place. They don't know uh, w- what, what things are going to look like. They don't know what their work is going to look like, what their family structures are going to look like, their friend structures, relationships. They don't know where their other kids are going to be taken care of. They're in a completely unknown area. And the first thing they do is they gather together. And as they gather together, the Holy Spirit does something in them in a, in a community. And together, they become more loving with one another. They become more, more giving, more accepting of one another. They get in more deeper relationships in one another. And so they become this outpost of healing. Right? They get to be called little Christ because they're this place of healing for others. And as this place of healing for others, when others come in and there's this, there's this need that takes place, they immediately begin to serve together. It's just automatic. We serve together. And so they, 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 uh, they, they collect their money. And they give offerings and tithes uh, in order to, uh, to give uh, um, financial donations to the brothers and sisters in Jerusalem who are in need for food. I just love how this church is. It's so beautiful. It's, it's, so, uh, it's, it's just a, a beautiful picture of, of how the Holy Spirit can shape us into being followers of Him, even amongst the unknown. After this, what's going to happen in the church of Antioch is uh, not in this chapter, but the, a couple of chapters over, like in Acts 13. What we see is the, the church leaders, um, the, 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 there's some uh, pastors and everything that, that have come together, and it's time to send out for more outposts. And so uh, they, they pray, and they seek, uh, and they, they come together, and they decide, okay, Saul and Barnabas uh, need to be sent out to start more outposts of healing. And so they lay hands on Saul uh, and, and Barnabas, and, and they... Uh, they give them financial offerings uh, so they can go and they send them out. They become a sending church. You know, they, they gather together. They, um, uh, they are an outpost of healing together. They serve together and they send together. It's not enough that there's just this little outpost of healing here in Antioch. But this little place of Antioch needs to also be uh, uh, this, in, in these other places. These these uh, uh, little uh, uh, hubs uh, of little Christ needs to not just be here, but be elsewhere. And so in Acts chapter 11, what we find in guiding us, and how are we going to go into the unknown? How are we going to live out in the unknown? We're not, in the, we're not entering it. We've been in it. What are we going to do? How do we live together uh, apart? How do we live together and yet apart? Well, a couple of things that we're going to focus on. And one of those things, the first thing that we're going to do is that we want to gather together. We gather together, just like the church in Antioch. And luckily for us, we can gather together virtually. Uh, but the point is, to, I think, to uh, gather together uh, and, uh, and worship together. So maybe that's not um, at 10 a.m. on Sunday mornings, right? 10 a.m. on Sunday mornings, uh, our worship gathering goes live, and we love everybody that gathers with us at 10 a.m. And the live chat, we see you guys in the live chat. Is it right here? I think it might be over there, my left. Yeah, Rick's giving me. Right over here. We love you guys in, in the live chat. Like, we love that. We love our Zoom calls afterwards. And it's okay, though, if, if 10 a.m. on a Sunday doesn't work for you. It doesn't work for you and your family or you and your friends. Saturday night church works for you? Great. Gather together on Saturday nights then. And just have Sunday morning church on Saturday night. We don't have to worry about meeting together at a specific time where we can't gather together. No, we, we gather together. So if you call Anthem home, but you don't have a set time in your week where you gather together to, uh, to, to worship, then this is the week. Start. Set a time. Every Tuesday night at 6, this is when we're going to gather. Every Sunday morning at 10, this is when we're going to gather. Every Sunday night at 6, this is when we're going to gather. Every Saturday night at 5.30, this is when we're going to gather. Every Wednesday, whenever it is, every Wednesday at five. But if you call Anthem home and you don't have a set time to when you gather, first step, have a set time and keep it. This is when we go. This is when we gather together for church. Second thing that we see here uh, is that Anthem, well, we are an outpost of healing. And that's just who we are. Our God has, has designed us and purpose to be. So when we think of how are we going to, uh, like, uh, like this past July, 
when the question wasn't, uh, well, we can't serve our brothers and sisters in need uh, because, uh, well, we, don't, we, we, uh, we can't all gather together with the pandemic. The question became, well, how are we going to? Um, we have, um, during this time of pandemic and when we've gone uh, virtual, <laughs> we've had brothers and sisters invite so many people to become guests and hang at Anthem week after week. Why? Well, because this is an outpost of healing. It's one of those things that we get uh, talked about sometimes. The, um, the, the love and acceptance, man, he, there's just too much love and acceptance. And, and yet we see Barnabas take a uh, reformed terrorist into a place where there's Jewish Christians and Gentile Christians that cross the political lines and the ethnic lines and the, the economic lines and all those biases. It says this is a place that's an outpost of healing for you. We, they will accept you just as you are. So we serve, we gather together. We are an outpost of healing together and we serve together. So what does it look like to serve together? Well, you know, we, we, uh, we took care with 75 care kits for our brothers and sisters in need in downtown Portland. But there's brothers and sisters in Anthem that just aren't here in downtown Portland. So what does it look like for our Anthem brothers and sisters in California, whether they're in the Inland Empire or in the Orange County? How can we, uh, who live outside of, of the Inland Empire, be able to serve them? Our brothers and sisters in, in Salem or in Arizona. It's not just about what it looks like here. There's a bigger thing happening here. There's little hubs, outposts of healing all over the place. Little hubs in, in, uh, in Vancouver. How can we serve our brothers and sisters in the coop? We don't, we, now our, our virtual gathering, though this isn't the way that we want it to be, though this is in the unknown, it doesn't mean that we don't church together. We are a tribe of Jesus followers. We are a tribe of sinners and saints. And the call in the unknown, in, in the call in the middle of this is not to add more stress onto our lives. Like, oh my gosh, what else, am I, what else are, do we have to add on here? Or, or how much better do I have to be? No, 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 because remember, his yoke is light. So we don't set a time in our week to gather because, oh man, I gotta make sure I get it in, otherwise Jesus is gonna be mad at me. No, 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 his yoke is light. We set time to gather together for church because it is, we're leaving, it is in worship. We get to, to uh, connect with God in ways that we don't elsewhere. And so he can launder us and he can be that outpost of healing in us. He can launder away uh, our, the areas that need to be laundered. And then he uses us to be able to be outposts of healing for others. You know, oh, they, they, uh, you know, they, they won't accept you here. Like we've had people at Anthem who don't go to Anthem, who've invited other people to Anthem because they know of the church, right? So someone else uh, comes here and has a friend who doesn't go to Anthem. And we've had people go, oh, hey, well, my friend invited their friend to Anthem. No, my friend doesn't go here, but they know that this is a place of love and acceptance. So there's brothers and sisters at Anthem, not because uh, the person here invited, but a friend of a friend who doesn't even come here invited them in. That's what an outpost of healing looks like. So we're going to learn what does it look like together to serve together, to church together in the middle of the unknown. It is going to be beautiful and amazing. And brothers and sisters, what I want for us right now is just to go ahead and close your eyes. And take a deep breath. And Jesus, what I want is to clear off whatever uh, stress that we're holding onto our shoulders or in our heads right now, whether it's wildfires, pandemic, schooling, relational, familial stress. And God, anybody that felt a heavier yoke when we speak about how we're going to serve together or gather together, God, would you remove that heaviness? May they feel the lightness of what it looks like to follow you, the grace that comes with following you, and the fulfillment that comes with living, learning, and serving together in the middle of the unknown. Amen. Brothers and sisters, would you continue to worship with us through song? I've heard thousand stories of what they think you're like. But I've heard the tender 
whisper of love in the dead of night and you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you Searching for answers far and wide, but I know we're all searching for answers. Only you provide because you know what we need before we say a word. You're a good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. Perfect in all of your ways to us. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to Jesus, thank you for your perfect ways, and thank you uh, for uh, shaping us uh, in the middle of them. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, thank you so much for hanging out. Uh, no Zoom call right now, because we're going to be seeing you tonight at 6. So uh, with that in mind, go ahead and extend your hands this week. And would you be blessed to go uh, and be a little Christ this week? Amen. Just go with it. <laughs> How's it going, everybody? I'm going to get my Bibles over here. <laughs> right here. Access. <laughs> yeah, Luke liked that one.
Oh, I should have gone with the T-Rex arms. Oh, that's what you guys, did. that what you did? No. Kyle did it, because Kyle doesn't like me. Kyle doesn't, that's why. Luke did it too, I feel like. It hurts my feelings. Never mind, I'm, fr- <coughs> I'm only friends with Rick now. Paul's unmuted. Mr. Miyagi. I can do the whole thing if you want. There, see? (laughs) Rick, I like those pants. 